Brushes in Painter are partly made in Painter and optionally partly made in uh, Designer. Uh, meaning, uh, you could make you could use a simple texture file as an alpha, but uh, if you utilize Designer, you can expose some parameters and um, it will allow you to drastically uh, change the appearance of the alpha based on some sliders and parameters like this one, uh, which is what we are going to do. So. Um, we're going to go back into designer and make a new graph. I will use the painter filter generic so we only have a single output generated for us. And uh, I will make an FX map, connect it to the output and uh, change it to grayscale so we get a black and white value uh, color uh, scale here. And I will right click, edit FX map. And uh, first off, I will make an iterate node or uh, let's do that later, actually. So first of all, I will um, uh, select the quadrants and um, choose a waves pattern. And uh, there are, uh, you can see uh, there are some parameters here. You can adjust like the rotation here. Um, and I would like to uh, make some noisy abstract pattern here, and I can use that. I can use a iterate node to achieve this. So if I set this as root, which means this is where the graph starts and it will work its way down, I can uh, utilize the iteration parameter here. And what it basically means is, uh, if this value is x, um, the um, graph will uh, run through. Uh, the hierarchy x amount of times. So if this is three, the uh, node will or the graph will start here, go down here, reach the end. It will go up on top again and go down again, reach the end, go on top again and go down again. And um, so basically, it will make the uh, it will make it it will basically generate this wave pattern three times, which is why you can see it has kind of stacked on top of each other because it is uh, generated generated on the exact same um, parameter settings here. So if I put this at 45, the um, uh, the stamp will be stamped on uh, the exact same, exact same uh, degree every time. I can uh, randomize this by um, uh, making a function. So I can uh, click the function icon here and choose a empty function and I can click the func uh, function icon again, I will enter into the function. A function is basically a, a bunch of uh, nodes which you can utilize to uh, generate a certain number, and you can return that number to uh, the parameter that was here. So uh, if I, I'm gonna just do this quick. So random, that is a node which um, generates a number randomly, or pseudo-randomly, it's not really random, but um, pseudo randomly um, based on uh, uh, the float here. So it, it, now it will generate a number, as you can see, generate a number between zero and the entry value, which is one, which we are connected here. So this random node will generate a random number between zero and one uh, for each iteration through the, uh, through the graph. So, uh, if you go up here and put this onto one, you can see the first time it uh, made a um, it made uh, the rotation um, degree four to five, or it doesn't actually return the value one uh, four to five. It returns a uh, value between uh, zero and one, but the uh, um, but it converts um, the um, rotation into degrees based on uh, the amount of turns. So uh, if one turn is uh, 360 degrees, uh, 0.25 right is uh, 45 degrees, if I, uh, it's on top of my head. Anyway, I think it's uh, 0.25, it's 45 degrees. So the first value it returned is uh, uh, 0.25, the next one is basically the same, and the third is something else. And uh, so now we have some random rotation in each iteration. and. Um, as you can see in Painter, these values were available here. You can make you can make these sliders or whatever by creating a um, 
parameter. If you double click the uh, graph, you can find some input parameter menu here. And uh, let's go back into the iterate node and we can actually, um, there is a bug within FX maps uh, in uh, 5.4, uh, which uh, means you cannot use the expose uh, function here uh, for some reason. What it would do is uh, automatically generate a parameter for you and uh, make a function and use uh, that parameter as the output or the return value. But it doesn't work in uh, FX maps. So you have to do this manually. So make a new function and enter the function by clicking the function button. And um, you will have to return an integer here. I know that for a fact because it's um, the parameter incremented from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's whole numbers. So that's an inter integer. Um, if you're familiar with programming, you are familiar, familiar with these. Uh, maybe you, uh, let's not talk too much about that. So integer, I will call this uh, I uh, set iteration amount. And uh, let's talk about the, uh, what, what this means. Identifier is basically the uh, name you will work with within this graph project. So if I go back into the uh, iterate function, and I write get integer, which is a node that fetches all the uh, integer parameters that you have made within your project or the graph. Uh, you can find it here. So uh, whatever value um, this parameter has, which is now one, uh, and I set this as output. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, whatever value this parameter has will be put into this parameter, and since this parameter, or this node, sorry, is uh, the output node, uh, that is number which will be returned to this parameter. So because this value has a number one, the value one, that is uh, the value which is returned to this parameter. So if I increase this um, parameter to, um, this variable to um, three, that is the number which is found here. And because um, this parameter, uh, every parameter that you make is um, visible on the alpha that you will make. So uh, since um, this is a parameter here, it will appear uh, under the alpha here as well. So that is the identifier, that is basically the name that you will work with within uh, the graph. The description is basically just a pop-up uh, text that uh, describes, uh, you can write whatever you want in there, but uh, ideally it will describe what the parameter does. But I'm not certain it actually has a function within Painter itself. Uh, but if you're gonna use it within Designer, it could be ideally ideal to write something here so the user understands what it is. But uh, since it's just a noise map, it doesn't really matter much. Or a uh, noise texture. Uh, label is the name that you will uh, see up here within uh, other applications. For instance, how you can see hardness or shape. Um, that is because uh, the reason this text appears is because the creator wrote that name in the label. If you don't write anything in a label, uh, it will use the uh, name that, I, that is within the identifier, and that is not ideal. Nobody, <laughs> almost nobody will understand what I set iteration amount is. So you can utilize the uh, label parameter to uh, write something that people will understand. Uh, but uh, for now, I'll just write iter iteration. <laughs> and the group is basically uh, how you make uh, dropdown uh, menus like this one. If I wrote, um, if I had multiple parameters and I wrote the same group name here, they would basically be stacked under a drop-down menu like this one, and they would uh, be stacked like this. So it basically is a way of uh, grouping a lot of parameters under a uh, drop-down menu, basically. But I will not use this now. Uh, the default is basically deciding uh, the default value that uh, this parameter will have on generation the minimum will set the minimum it could have. So if I don't want it to be able to set it to zero, I can limit it to one. And the max is uh, deciding the maximum it can be. But you have to remember to use the clamp uh, boolean here 
about the button uh, to set set it to true um, to actually limit it. Um, so if I set it to false, I can go below. If I set it to true, I cannot go above 10 or below 1. Uh, the step is basically how uh, the uh, parameter or the slider will increment its value. So that's the user data. That is basically just something for you to read, like, like something you write for yourself, because this is this will not be visible anywhere else um, other than this, like this location within the application. So it's basically a place to leave a note for yourself. The visible if is a um, it allow if it's a condition, uh, some condition, condition program, programming. So, for instance, if I had a boolean, uh, I could potentially hide this parameter um, if I set this to true or false. Uh, the basic idea is uh, it it allows you to hide some parameters which are uh, which has no function at the time. So, if for some reason this parameter would not work for some reason. Um, within the uh, other application, I could basically just hide this and not show it at all. And uh, that is basically it. We could, um, maybe we could uh, expose uh, something else. You can expose, uh, now we can demonstrate the expose because this is not within the function. It, but you cannot expose parameters in here because it's in the function for some reason. But if you just uh, click the FX map, you can basically expose here. And uh, the expose, will basically um, generate a uh, parameter for you and make a function uh, right here. Um, and it will use the uh, parameter that we make here as a return, the return value. So you don't have you don't have to make an empty function and go back and make a parameter on the main graph and go back into the function and get the float or integer or whatever. You can just um, expose it and type a name. And this is, uh, I would call this, this is float, so I'll uh, prefix it with nf and uh, set global opacity click ok and uh, I can go into the function and you can see it has made the uh, it had it had it has fetched the float uh, parameter and uh, set as an output um, the output uh, node and uh, so that all that has done, been done for us you can find it here so uh, label, you can just call this uh, global opacity, and I can clamp this between zero and one. Or actually, let's clamp it to point uh, zero one, and put it by default to. Uh, they're kind of overexposed, so. Uh, no. It doesn't really matter. And uh, that's basically it, I think. Or actually, we have to um, write something into the attributes menu here. Uh, you can find this by double clicking the graph. Double clicking the graph. So uh, the identifier doesn't really matter because it will not appear outside um, the uh, project here. But uh, let's call it, let's just call it something um, smeared circle. You cannot use um, spaces within the identifier. It has to be, uh, you can you say underscore or something. Uh, the category is, uh, I don't think it matters within Painter, but it, it is useful within Designer because uh, it's how the um, the library fetches its uh, nodes within the filters here. This is a, a filter. You can see how it fetches the uh, uh, nodes uh, based on the uh, uh, this menu. So this uh, noises filter will fetch any um, SPSAR file within its uh, library destination, which has the category name equal to generator. So if I uh, wrote generator <laughs> generator here, it will attempt to fetch that. And if its um, tag is equal to noise, which is here, it would fetch uh, the uh, node and place it within this filter right here. But I think I would rather have it within the pattern right here. So instead of writing noises uh, in the tags, I can write pattern right here. As you can see, uh, this filter will fetch 
all the uh, SPSR files which has the tag equal to pattern, and I have that here. The description is, uh, I don't think it matters within uh, Painter either, but it matters within designer. So if you want to use it within designer as well, it, it could be ideally ideal to write something here. Um, that would basically, uh, that's basically the description that pops up when you hover over a node. Uh, but I'm not sure it, it actually matters since this is just a simple um, pattern or noise uh, node. Anyway, uh, the label that is the name that will be uh, appear here, for instance, abstract squares um, or brick one. That is basically the name that you write here. So uh, I'm just gonna call it the same as the identifier, basically. Uh, smear circle. Author, author. This is the name that will appear if you, for instance, uh, right-click the uh, node here. You can see the author here. So if you're, for instance, you can write your name or your company name or whatever. And uh, that is what will appear here. Um, and also you can write your uh, website, for instance, and then the website will appear right there. And uh, user data, once again, that is just uh, some place to write some notes for yourself. It will not appear anywhere else than uh, right here. And that is uh, basically it. So we can attempt to save and publish this. So save your project somewhere. Uh, before you can publish it, you have to make a, or publish it to Painter, you have to go back into Painter and uh, make a new library or a, a new shelf. Um, but you have to close whatever you have up uh, before you can do this. So file, close, it will close the current project and now you can go back into edit setting, find a shelf and uh, you have to make a new shelf for yourself. So for instance, I made one that is called tutorials and I can, um, uh, what a shelf basically does is make a, um, a um, folder hier hierarchy within this destination. So if I go back and if I go and find this place, this uh, destination, uh, you can see I found it here. Uh, tutorials, uh, Punisher tutorial. I can, I can go inside here and you can see this is the um, uh, folder hierarchy. It has made a uh, folder automatically for each of these um, shelf items or shelf groups. So if I want a um, SPSR file uh, or uh, if I want this um, Whatever, whatever you made in the uh, designer application to appear within the alpha, um, the alpha shelf, I have to place the SPSR file within the alpha uh, folder, which I have done here. This is the location. I go into, oops, go into the alpha, and I'll save it here. And as you can see, uh, the file took the name from. Uh, it adapted the uh, name of the project here. Um, so let's see. Let's go into yeah. Uh, sadly, I'm pretty sure yeah. As of uh, two point one one, you have to restart the application to fetch the new um, items that you import. So just restart Painter. And um, open a sample. And now you can search for the uh, name and you can see, there it is, circle smeared. And uh, so now we can start making the brush within Painter itself. Um, Painter has a lot of parameters here uh, by default. Um, so you don't have to make this yourself. You do not make these within uh, Designer or any other applications. These are, they are here for you to utilize whatever you use. Um, so uh, you can see the alpha here. If I take this away or eliminate it, you can see uh, I'm left with uh, a simple um, float uh, parameter here from which uh, generates the black or white values. If I click the um, alpha uh, SPSR, SPSR file here, it will automatically place it within uh, the alpha slot within the brush. So um, that is basically it, actually. You can see I have the iteration uh, 
uh, integer parameter here. I also have the global opacity and also you have the random uh, seed here because we included it, included it as we uh, published it. And uh, now you can basically just make the brush that you want and um, you know, flow is basically sort of a opacity parameter space that is the spacing between them. as you as you paint that basically decides the distance between each uh, stamp. Uh, and you have some jitter that is basically just some uh, randomizing randomizing uh, parameter, so you get a slight variation uh, between each stamp and. Uh, yeah, that is basically a jitter. It's just a slight random randomizing factor. The alignment uh, parameter here uh, decides how the brush uh, stroke will be projected onto the surface or not. So, for instance, if I have the camera, it will uh, always be projected uh, particular uh, with the camera view. So if I draw something here, You will see some, um, maybe there's another brush that is more visible. You should uh, see some texture smearing. What happens now? Camera. You should see some smearing. Uh, texture smearing. Right there. And uh, the tangent warp looks at the tangent of the object and uh, paints it. Uh, based on that, you will see a lot less smearing when you use that. And the UV will allow you to, uh, for instance, if you have cut your UV in some way and uh, you would not like to, you would like the, the uh, brush strokes to uh, uh, be separate between the UVs, you can uh, use the uh, UV alignment and um, it will. Uh, stop. If, if you use a big size, you can actually draw here, and it will not be transfer uh, transferred onto the neighboring uh, UV space. So if I change this back to uh, uh, plain warp. You can see I can now actually paint on the other UV island. The uh, size space will allow you to decide um, uh, where the uh, brush will. Uh, uh, I use its size. Uh, how do I explain this? Uh, I'm going to just demonstrate. You can see this uh, right here, the brush is this size, right? When I take it into the uh, uh, UV material uh, or UV viewport, you can see the brush is actually a lot bigger. But if I start to draw, you can see the brush stroke is actually a lot less or a lot smaller than it actually is within this viewport. That's because it uses the uh, object space, uh, size space. If I change this to viewport, it uh, is uh, basically um, the size uh, of the individual viewport. So if I draw in this uh, viewport, you can see it is as big as it should be. And if I draw in this viewport, it is as big as it should be in this relative to the viewport that you're in. So if I change it to texture, it basically is the opposite of the object. If it's a set of texture, I can draw here and it will be the, uh, the correct size. And if I go in here, I can see the brush is a lot smaller and start drawing. You can see it's a lot bigger. So once you uh, have found a brush that you like, you can um, right click the, uh, the window here and you can create brush preset. And I will basically just make a new brush for you uh, right here. You can right click and uh, rename it to something. Uh, I have no idea what to call this. Uh, something, something, something. <laughs> and um, you can search for it. And now it will. Um, and now you can, for instance, export it. Um, export resource or export substance share or uh, if you want to if you want to uh, make some changes to it you can change it right here Oops. change it right here and you can for instance right click or uh, and uh, 
update from current rule, then it will uh, adopt the new settings that you made. Or you can just uh, make a new preset and uh, and so on.